So having spoken to the wedding venue about potentially having camper van spots here, I've got some information to tell you. Nice. Hey everyone, I hope you're all well and ready for another adventure with me and Jeff the camper van. Like us, right at the very start of owning our camper van, we thought it was going to be just used for camping trips. However, having owned our van for a fair few years now, we've come to the realisation that it's actually way more versatile than we'd first thought. Not only do we now use it for family day trips to keep the cost of buying food down while we're out for the day, I've also realised that it makes a great base for me when I'm working. This has helped me photograph weddings all over the country and it also gets me to places I wouldn't have gone to to get some of my favourite landscape photographs too. In this video I use it for just that, a two day wedding fair about an hour from me and using the van to camp saved me a lot of travel time and fuel costs. The extra hour in bed also makes a massive difference. It's not gone unnoticed while editing this video that it shows that I've fueled myself mainly on coffee. <laughs> I do like my coffee and probably drink far too much of the stuff. But anyway, I hope you enjoy this mini adventure and if you're getting married and have yet to book your venue then have a look at Thief Hall. Also, for those wondering, this is not a sponsored video, just me doing my thing and helping other humans and documenting my usage of the camper van. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that jazz. See you, bye. So you probably guessed that I am at a wedding fair this weekend and I thought I'd vlog it because I am staying in the van throughout the whole weekend. So if you leave your van on the drive and only use it to go camping, think about maybe using it for work. If you've got a job, which means you travel a lot and uh, you don't want to be driving there and back all the time, maybe once or twice a week you can stay in your van and just have a van night. It's nice, once the curtains are closed, you could be anywhere. A couple of beers in the van so I can chill with those tonight and a movie. Uh, get some food on the go as well and uh, I'll fix the diesel eater I'll tell you more about that a little bit later on as well and uh, and yeah it's just a case of uh, cracking on and uh, finding out actually where I'm going to be camping because I have no idea uh, where I'm going to be camping I could have an epic view I could be right next to a cow shed um, <laughs> right I'm going to go back in now because people are looking at me and I feel like a bit of an idiot okay see you bye the venue would kindly let me stay in their wonderful car park for the duration of the fair. And later on in the video, I'll give you some more information about camping here too. So stay tuned for that. Oh, lovely. The reason I'm doing this and camping at the fair rather than driving home and back again each day is that, you know, I've driven here today and I have to go back tonight, come back tomorrow, go back Saturday night, come back Sunday, go back Sunday. You're talking six hours of travel in total. Um, that can be avoided just by using the van. Not only do I get to use my van, Ace, I love camping, as you know, um, it means that I'm right here at the venue so I can have a bit of a lie-in as well. I think it's time now though to do the inevitable, which is once I'm camped up, time for a pot noodle, obviously. Regular viewers of the channel will be more than familiar with this vision of unhealthiness. <laughs> However, it's part and parcel of my adventures in the van. Quick camping food on the go. For those who have asked, hashtag not sponsored, I'm using the EcoFlow Delta 2 to boil my cheap low watt travel kettle. I'll put a link in the description below to the Delta 2 and also the travel kettle that I'm using too. Oh, I don't think there's anything better than getting set up in your van, getting the kettle on and getting that coffee brewing. Oh, now I've been thinking, dangerous, I know. But do you think there's mileage in wedding venues putting spaces out for camper vans? Maybe two or three tops? I genuinely think that there's mileage in it. For instance, if I go to a wedding as a guest and I don't want to stay in a hotel, maybe it's 120, 150 pound a night, whatever it is, and there's a couple of spaces for some camper vans, I'm going to pull my camper van up in there. Now, don't get me wrong, the venue we're going to lose out on maybe me staying there and spending 150 pounds, but the likelihood is I'm going to go home. So I wouldn't have spent that 150 pounds anyway. Whereas if they put a specific plot out, they can charge for that space, you know, whatever they want, I suppose. If there's an electric hookup, maybe 30, 40 pound a night, still gonna be cheaper than the venue. You're more likely to stay. You're more likely to have a drink because you're staying. I genuinely think that uh, there's some mileage in this. And I'm gonna speak to the venue here as well because there is plenty of space in this car park that I'm in now to allow for maybe two spots and potentially two electric hookups with epic views. You know what I'm saying? I should be like some sort of camper van, wedding venue coordinator, business consultant. <laughs> Have you seen these? These pods are amazing. Uh, they've got quite a few of them and I think you can stain them. How ace is that? Look at that. Oh, lovely, lovely. And uh, you can also get ready and have your friends and stuff like that getting ready uh, in this area here. There's loads and loads of 
bits and spaces and they're all just like it's like self-catering rooms they've got kitchens and all sorts sorry if it's wind noise but uh my vantage part there lovely jovely awesome saucer i've got some epic views oh lovely look at that sky I might get photographed and uh, and the venue itself is just there across the road so uh, i've got my own barrel look lovely uh i don't know yep solid <laughs> i've literally just been chilling out in the van and uh, it's almost dark now, I'm just going to nip back into the venue, have a quick scout around, see who else has arrived and, uh, and suggest to them about the uh, camper van thing, because I think that's an awesome idea, if I might say so myself. Nice, see you, bye. I went back to the venue to have a look around, film a few of the stands and finish setting up. I checked everything was good to go and then spoke to the staff about my idea for having campervan spots for venue guests. So having spoken to the wedding venue about potentially having camper van spots here, I've got some information to tell you. Nice. They actively encourage camping here when you come and stay here. How ace is that? They've got two electric hookups, which um, I think they give priority to uh, bride and groom. But they were telling me that they've had events here and weddings here where it's just been full of campers. People have been in tents in the field. They've had the full camper vans here and they even hire out a shower block. So then that can be used for everybody just mint. I think that's a game changer for any wedding venue that are thinking about doing it, especially if they've got the space to do it. Brilliant, because so many people have got camper vans now, and like the venue said to me, and like I thought as well, they're going to drink more behind the bar, and they're probably going to get up in the morning and have breakfast as well, so it's great for the venue, it's great for the people coming and staying, happy days. And this venue, by the way, none of this is sponsored, this is me just working and doing vloggings, they let you camp here for free as well. How ace is that? Oh. So as the sun was setting, I decided to hunker down, watch some TV and enjoy a cold beer before the inevitable rumble of my tummy started. Food then became a priority and it was time to crack on with dinner. I always get everything out first so I know it's ready to go. I opened a window to let out the fumes and smells from cooking and started to make some burgers in my SQ Professional pan. I do love this pan, hashtag not sponsored again, as it's way larger than my Ridge Monkey and it doesn't spill the fat when I turn it over. Plus, I can get way more in this than the Ridge Monkey. Don't get me wrong though, I do love the Ridge Monkey and continue to use it, but the SQ Professional is mostly at the top of my list when it comes to cooking. I'll also pop a link in the description below because I know quite a lot of you have been asking about it. Oh, dinner fit for a king. Lovely. Couple of burgers, a beer. Right, I'm going to eat my dinner and then uh, I think I might set the bed up, get comfortable, get another movie on. In fact, I'm not watching movies, I'm watching Bear Grylls because I've got the full collection of Man vs. Wild on the, uh, on the pad. So I'm going to watch that on there and uh, get chilled out. So I shall see you when I'm setting the bed up. Okay, see you, bye. So I've just watched Leeds win 1-0, which has made my evening. That's lovely. And I thought I'd quickly update you on the diesel eater because I'm sat here, it's toasty warm, it's about 20 odd degrees in the van and I'm really happy. However, I think I touched on the fact that it wasn't working when I were in Scotland, the time that I needed it the most, obviously. And to cut a very long story short, when I first installed the Chinese diesel eater that I've got in the van, I left one of the cheap green pipes. You get like some cheap fuel pipe that you're supposed to change for uh, a thicker, uh, like a plasticky pipe, which is a lot better. And I'd left one in um, during the swap over of those pipes and that had perished. So it was a quick changeover to put what I had left pipe-wise in the fuel line and it fired up straight away. And I thought, well, I can't really make a full video out of this because it's a 10 minute fix. And it literally was, it was just basically just swapping out the pipes. Uh, so yeah, for those that are interested, because I know a few have been asking, uh, that was the quick and easy fix that I did to the diesel heater and it's working an absolute dream now. So I'm just gonna chill out this evening, watch a bit more Man vs Wild, have my final beer and then uh, call it an act. So I've got a busy day tomorrow talking to a lot of people. So I shall see you guys in the morning. Okay, good night, bye. As with most mornings, it came too fast. Before I knew it, the sun was up and it was time to get sorted, get the kettle on and get on with my day. Oh, nothing worked without a coffee, nothing. Good morning. 
Well, that was a lovely sleep, if not a little bit windy. Not from me, from the outsides. <laughs> Apart from Mother Nature's wind, um, it was a lovely sleep and quite peaceful, because obviously only me here, nobody else. Right? It's almost time to do work. <laughs> I turned the charm level up to 11 and spent the day chatting with some amazing people and fingers crossed they turn into wedding customers for me in the coming months. But that level of enthusiasm only works when I've had too much coffee. It's been an awesome day. I've spoke to a load of people. Um, if you're watching this and uh, you came up and chatted, awesome, thank you so much. Uh, it's been amazing. Met some great suppliers as well. And now I think it's time to go back to the van, go chill out, get some dinner on and <laughs> photobomb. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, nice. Cheers. Just nice to get back to the van after a day at work. It's not been hard work, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Talking to awesome people who are planning one of the best days of their lives. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I had a really good laugh today, it's been ace. And do you know what? Having the van and being able to just get up and walk straight to the venue has been an absolute game changer for me. I absolutely love it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is chill out for a bit, uh, get all the details that I've taken today all sorted and together and then uh, get some dinner on. Nice. See you bye. I fell asleep. <laughs> I fell asleep at about five. It's about midnight now and I've just woken up ready for my day. <laughs> what an idiot. It's just the van is a complete mess. An absolute mess. You can tell I'm not properly camping in here. I'm just using it as a bed and a sort of chill zone. So I'm going to try and get some shot. I am wide awake. I could literally do a dance and it's midnight, which is pff, stupid. Absolutely stupid of me. There's nothing I can do about it. I just need to just lay down and rest, I suppose. Good morning. An epic sleep actually last night, considering my three hour kip that I'd had previous. And uh, one thing I forgot to mention yesterday as well is that I arrived to this wedding fair with some really like snazzy posh clothes and stuff so I'd look all like neat and lovely and I forgot my smart shoes uh, but I suppose I'm like cool photographer call cool photographer you know <laughs> right then I think it's time to go do some work whatever if that's what you call it go do some talking to some people right see you bye headed off back to the venue for another day of chatting and schmoozing and after two days of chatting I was surprisingly tired I didn't film much, as in this situation, work is more important than vlogging. However, hopefully one day, the vlogging thing could be a full-time job. I can only dream. <laughs> oh, they've got archery. Look, nice. So you can have archery at your wedding. How many is that? So I've got a little bit of a, a cool fact about this place for you. This place is called Thief Hall, um, but it used to be called Thief Hull. Now, bear with the road that runs out the side of this building it's only a single track road used to be the main road a very very long time ago the london edinburgh road now they used to dig a well there was a big hole in the ground that uh, bandits used to hide inside and uh, and then they'd rob the coaches and the carriages that came up because there were no doubt mainly affluent people traveling from london to edinburgh and uh, and they'd rob them um, and that's basically and then they re restored this place into a wedding venue how ace is that Proper, proper ace. Right, that's it, that's me done. Um, another wedding fair in the bag and another camp out in the bag as well. Two nights in the van. I've really enjoyed that actually. Uh, some nice chill time last night, obviously uh, going to sleep super early and sorry there was not much filming today. Uh, I didn't think you'd want to see all of the uh, wedding fair again. But uh, yeah, it's been awesome. If you want to book your wedding or anything like that, go to Thief Hall, go check them out. And uh, they're up near North Allerton if you're up this way. And that's about it. So I shall see you guys on the next adventure, wherever that may be. Take care. See you, bye. Don't want to record, stupid. Just a test run to see whether um, audio works fine while I'm driving and stuff to see what it sounds like. I think it sounds probably all right. I don't know. But, uh, oh shit, better stop. I don't know what to say. And is that a little bit weird, the light behind me and stuff, isn't it? Oh, it's like CCTV or something, doesn't it? <laughs> Do it again. Recorded. Oh. Didn't even record that bit, what a div. One, two, check, check. No. Wedding venues.
wedding venues. Uh, reserving, that's it. Or make creating a space. Uh, I might do this twice because wind. Uh, that way. Yeah, let's go that way. They act, wait a minute. But they've had full blown people camping here. Full blown people. So they've got obviously splot, splots, definitely splots. That's what it's all about. <laughs> So I've just watched Leeds win 1-0.